The astonishing changes in the Mediterranean, specifically in the Aegean Sea, between 12,000 and 11,700 years ago, that is the difference between the Ice Age and the Great Flood. And this is the supposed area, and a lot of people believe that this is, uh, it could have been Atlantis, but we still don't know where Atlantis was. And the name Aegean comes from the ancient Greek King Aegis, who uh, lost his son Theseus in the Aegean Sea. He believed he lost it, but uh, he lost him, but he didn't. Um, now, I'll give you a little bit of that mythology or history, but the changes are unbelievable. What happened when the Ice Age stopped, when it finished and all this ice melted, and of course the sea levels rose hundreds of feet, meaning that all this landmass that uh, was once Greece has become Greece and the Greek islands of Crete and uh, Rhodes and all of this section as you see there, the little Greek islands between Greece and Turkey. And you can see that whole area is raised anyway. You can imagine that that was a huge landmass uh, with, of course, very few areas of sea, if there was any, when we had the Ice Age over 12,000 years ago. Of course, 12,800 years ago, we have the Younger Dryas impact, and we had a very huge change on the Earth because of the Great Flood. It was a, a type of an extinction-level event. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetize my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. In Greek mythology, Aegis was an archaic figure in the founding myth of Athens. He gave his name to the Aegean Sea, next to Poseidon, the father. He was the father of Theseus, the founder of the Athenian institutions, and one of the kings of Athens. Aegis was the son of Pandion, the king of Athens and Pilia. Aegis' first wife was Meta, daughter of Hope, Hopeless, and his second wife, Cassiope, daughter of Rexenor. Now, when uh, Aegis was born, in Megara, outside of Athens. Uh, he settled after being expelled from Athens by the sons of Metion, who seized the throne. And uh, after the death of Pandion, now king of Megara, Aegis, in conjunction with his three brothers, successfully attacked Athens, took control over the government, expelled the usurpers, and they divided the power among themselves. But Aegis obtained the sovereignty of the area of Attica, it's been said that Megara was at a time part of Attica and that Nissus received his part when he became king of that city. Lycus became the king of Evia and uh, the division of the land was explained after the following from uh, geographer Strabo, but we're not going to go into that. Uh, the heirless king, still without a male heir with his previous marriages, Aegis asked the oracle at Delphi for advice. And according to Pausanias, Aegis ascribes this misfortune to the anger of Aphrodite, and in order to conciliate her, introduced her worship as Aphrodite Urania, the heavenly, in Athens. And the cryptic words of the Oracle of Delphi were, Do not loosen the bulging mouth of the wineskin until you have reached the height of Athens, lest you die of grief. Aegis did not understand the prophecy and was disappointed. This puzzling oracle forced Aegis to visit Pythias, king of Trizine, who was famous for his wisdom and skill at expounding the oracles. Pythias understood the prophecy and introduced Aegis to his daughter, Aethra. When Aegis was drunk, they lay with each other, and in some versions, Aethra waited in the island of Sveria and um, bedded Poseidon. When Aethra became pregnant, Aegis decided to return to Athens. Before leaving, he buried his sandals, shields, and sword under a huge rock and told her that when, her, when their son grew up, he should move the rock and bring the weapons to his father, 
who would acknowledge him as his son. Upon his return to Athens, Aegis married Medea, another woman, of course, who had fled from Corinth and the wrath of Jason, the, of the Argonauts. Aegis and Medea had one son named Medus. When Theseus grew up, he found his father's belongings left for him, and he went to Athens to claim his birthright, carrying the shield and sandals and uh, the spear. Aegis recognized him as his son by his sword, shield, and sandals. Aegis, uh, Medea, Aegis' wife, perceived Theseus to be a threat for her children and inheritance, and first tried to discredit and then to do away with him by poison, as we know most ancients did. When Aegis discovered these schemes, he drove Medea out of Athens. But um, while visiting in Athens, King Minos' son Androgeos managed to defeat Aegis in every contest during the Panathenai Games. Out of envy, Aegis sent him to conquer the Marathonian bull, which killed him. Minos was angry and declared war in Athens. He offered the Athenians peace, but under the condition that Athens would send seven young men, seven young women every nine years to Crete to be fed to the Minotaur, the vicious monster who was like a hybrid uh, bullhead with a, 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 a man's body. And continued until, this continued until Theseus killed the Minotaur with the help of Adriani, Minos' daughter, who fell in love with Theseus. So after his adventures in Crete, Theseus returned by ship to Athens. Now his father, Aegeus, previously asked him, to hang a white sail as a sign that Theseus is still alive, but Theseus neglected that he forgot this request. When Aegis saw Theseus' ships without white sails, he assumed that the worst and threw himself in his grief into the sea. And that's why the, na the, the Aegean Sea is named after Aegis, because he threw himself into the Aegean Sea. sea. So that's the, why it's called the Aegean Sea. But uh, going to the ancient... Uh, differences of what happened to uh, what is supposedly the difference in the Aegean uh, geology after the between the Ice Age and the quote-unquote Great Flood. Uh, the advanced culture we talked about before the last glacial period, the region of the Aegean, uh, also known as Aegis, Aegida in the word Aegean comes from Aegis, as we said, King Aegis, the father of Theseus. The, glass, the last glacial period occurred from the end of the Imian to the end of the Younger Dryas, encompassed the period of 115,000 to about 11,700 years ago, and the capital city of Aegis was Pelasia, and today it's called Athens. Now, we know that Pelasia is also described in uh, the Old Testament, that was the time of when the earth was divided. Uh, and Pelasia is the area where Pelasgos used to live. Okay, one of the descendants of Adam, uh, Pelasgos. In the time of the division of the land, Pelasgos was there in Pelasia. I didn't know that was Athens, but we learn something every day, don't we? So the entire territory of Greece, alas, was initially called Aegeus Pelasia. The goddess Athena was known by the epithet Egalia, which is another way of saying Aegis. Now, Pelasia means Pelasgos, the ancient Aegean Pelasgos language, meaning um, uh, a small sea. Now, the Greek language stems from the ancient Aegean language. The word uh, Aegean, Latin Aegeus from, the, from Aegeus the king, as we saw it, King Aegeus, Aegeus, who was Theseus' father. Now, um, during the last glacial period, the straits separated with what's now called Europe from Africa. They were landlocked, separating what is now called the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean. The two separate seas divided the Aegean Sea, one in the east and another in the west land connected Italy, Sicily, and Tunisia. Land connected Sicily, Italy, and Tunisia. That's the area of land just above the writing here that says Africa. You can see the boot of Italy and Sicily is totally connected. And there's not much of an Ionian sea between Italy and uh, what is now Greece, what is, where it's written Aegis. Um, so Aegis that's where he fell into the Aegean Sea, 
uh, I guess, uh, as you can see, basically didn't have that much water on it, unless it had a few lakes or whatever. Now, going back into the uh, word, uh, the Pelasgians founded uh, Iliopolis Atum, what is now Atum in ancient Egypt, and uh, the Greeks preserved the history and culture by a written record in the temples of those cities. The Ethiopians emigrated to Egypt and became the Egyptian people. Now, the Aegeans lived in favorable conditions, and it was the cradle of civilization until the cataclysm, the Great Flood, destroyed most of this ancient culture 11,700 years ago. Uh, that's about the time of the sinking of Atlantis. That happened, uh, according to ancient texts, 9,650 years ago, let's say 9,700 years ago. Uh, but some noble uh, Aegean mountaineers survived the cataclysm from 11,700 onwards, and they passed on the names of uh, the descendants uh, for us to know. Now, Iliopolis in Egypt was founded by an Aegean named Actis, who was one of the sons of Helios, known as the Heliade. Helios was the autochthon and not the son of Hyperion and Thea. Now, the word Egypt, Egypt, comes from Aegis and Ypt, meaning pt is used for the word uh, pta, Aegis, pta. Pta is another way of saying Aegis. Uh, in the Heliopolitan creation myth, Atum was considered to be the first god, having created himself sitting on a mound for, or identified with the mound itself from the primordial, primordial waters Nu. Atum was linked specifically with the evening sun, closely linked to Kefri. Uh, and Nefertum was an aspect of Atum, later became the son of the creator god Ptah. Nefertum was the god of the lotus blossom, who emerged from the primeval waters at the beginning of time. Nefertum and Atum is the Egyptian word for kopsidas, which can be found in words, for example, head kop, mound kop, hill kop, and lotus water lily sidas. Nefertum was usually depicted as a beautiful young man having blue water lily flower around his head, and Nefertum was born from a blue lotus bud that emerged from the primeval mound kop, which first rose above Nun's waters at the beginning of creation. Now, in the twelfth hour of the Book of Gates, Nun is depicted with upraised arms holding a solar bark or a boat. The boat is occupied by eight deities with the scarab deity Kefri, an Aegean, standing in the middle surrounded by the seven other deities. The Egyptian god Kefri represents Kopsidas, that is, the Aegeans, and Kefri is often represented as a scarab holding the morning sun aloft a scarab-headed man, an Aegean. In one hand, the sun god holds a, a, a scepter, in the other an anke. His symbols are the scarab and the blue lotus, and Kefri was an Aegean who belonged to the line of Kopsidas. Atum represents the mound and also represented by the image of the primeval hill, the cop. In his aspect as a solar deity, Atum was also depicted as a scarab and the giant scarab Aegean statue, which now stands at the sacred lake at Karnak, was dedicated to Atun, Atum, A-T-U-M. The head or cop of Atum and Kefri represents the Aegeans and the lotus flower is the Sidas. Kefri and Atum were Aegeans, and Kopsida are the Aegeans. So, uh, the ancient Greeks believe that their forefathers also passed down the events and history of the Aegean Pelasgians by oral traditions. And in parts of Aegelia, they were also no later known as the Celts or the Celts. So it's believed that the pre-Hellenic, pre-Greek culture, hence pre-Semitic and pre-Egyptian, um, all have to do with uh, Pelas the Aegean Sea, what, what is today the Aegean Sea, and Pelasgos. This is uh, from Copsidas info and also from Wikipedia. 
Please leave your comments about this and thank you for your support. I basically, I wanted to show you the differences in what happened uh, between the Ice Age and the Great Flood. And uh, it could have been the event of the Younger Dryas Comet, of course. And uh, all this is, of course, part of this is, of course, written in as history events in the Old Testament as well. Thank you for your support. Please leave your comments. Thank you.